Uh, I'm Matthew Dale. I work as an engineer at Tune. Uh, <laughs> Obligatory, obligatory uh, applause <laughs> that I think that you need to now reproduce for every subsequent uh, speaker so they don't feel left out. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about a library called Static. So let's say uh, you're building a web application you decide to use Go because uh, one of the guarantees that Go gives you is that you can build a single statically linked binary that you can put anywhere anywhere having a little asterisk down here being uh, on the same OS and architecture. But really, uh, assuming you don't jump across a lot of operating systems and architectures all the time, or if you are familiar with the cross-compilation features, that's not a serious uh, limitation. So, uh, we can compile this to a single binary. We can put this anywhere, assuming the same operating system and architecture, and we're happy. Now my uh, Application gets a little bit more complex. I'm going to serve some static uh, HTML elements. So I add index.html. And maybe I need some style. So I add a style sheet. I add style and CSS. And maybe I need a little bit of a front end application. So I add a JavaScript file. So I add app.js. Okay, so I don't have one file anymore. I have my Go binary, an HTML document, a CSS document, and a JavaScript document. Okay, so I've got a new problem. I need to package all of this. So maybe I'll just use a tarball or an RPM. Uh, we need to stop before we go off the deep end of package management because this is going to lead you to a really unhappy place eventually because you're going to quickly expand your dependency tree because all of a sudden you need packaging. So this is where one possible path you can take here is uh, packaging all of the static content into your Go binary. And that's where the static library comes in. It gives you the ability to generate from a given directory tree all of the file contents or a, a Go source file with all of the file contents in a directory tree that you can then compile into your Go binary. Uh, the static library includes two main components. The first is the static command line tool, which is the generator generates your Go source file. And the second is the file system of the static FS library, which gives you access to the contents you compiled into your Go binary and provides a convenience layer, which is an interface in the uh, HTTP file system interface, which gives you the ability to mount this as a file server that you can request files from the original path that they were generated from. You don't have to worry about setting up the handle or this basically gives you the ability to use this as a handler out of the box. So here's what a setup operation looks like. Step one, install the library. Step two, generate the source code from your whatever directory tree you have that you want to include the contents from in your binary. And step three is uh, mount this file system either using an HTTP.file server and just the basic HTTP handler um, that the Go HTTP server provides you, or you could manually fetch the uh, file contents if, for example, you wanted to use this for another reason, like to render an HTML template, which is actually something that one of our services does at Go, or at Q. Um, some notes on the use of this. Everything is uh, compressed to a single, or everything is stored in a single uh, literal string in a zip compressed format. So this is going to preserve all of your uh, file uh, permissions, all the file in time stamps. And it's going to take up less time than the actual files on the file system. Uh, every time you call open, which is what a request to the HTTP.file server will do, it unzips the contents currently. So it's something to keep in mind, this is not going to be an extremely, it's not the same as just reading from a map. It actually unzips the contents and a little bit of CPU time overhead required to make these calls. Um, and be careful when you're calling, when you're creating one of these new file system objects because it's going to iterate over the contents and load 
the uh, individual files into memory every time, so don't do this every time you want to get to it, otherwise you're gonna create a memory leak. Uh, and so far as changing the file contents are concerned, every time you change the file contents, the uh, single literal string line is going to change independent of the size of the change. So you may end up with some large dips in your uh, source control history. Uh, and static is certainly not the only uh, act in town. There are lots of alternatives. All of the listed Go libraries do something very similar but offer a slightly different set of um, utilities for dealing with statically <laughs> embedded content. Uh, you can always go the really, really simple route and just declare a literal string with the contents that you want to serve. Uh, this obviously has the downsides of it's not very easy to edit. You're not going to get, the editor is not going to know that what is in this literal string is HTML. It's going to expect it just to be some random string. You're not going to get syntax highlighting or autocompletion or any of that stuff that you might want. Um, and uh, some of you may be thinking, why don't you just put this on a CDN? And that really is a good answer too, but that adds a layer of complexity that you may not, you may have been trying to avoid in the first place. Uh, but for high traffic uh, contents or high traffic resources, this is what you should be doing anyway, because this should always serve from a CDN or another HTTP web server sitting in front of your web server and not by your Go web server. Anybody have questions? Yes. So, I've seen Go Vendetta data because we used it. I'm curious, what, why did you decide to decide to use Go Vendetta for the next year? What did you do? What did you do? So, I actually, um, what's that? Oh, so the question was, uh, compared to some of the other similar Go libraries, why did I pick static? And the short answer is, uh, Ryan pulled together these libraries that he wanted us to talk about. Uh, so, <laughs> I think static because it was on the list of uh, interesting libraries, but I did actually uh, kind of compare and contrast these because I asked myself the same question. And I would, of the libraries listed, I would either use static or this uh, ESC library because of its some of these provide way more functionality than I would personally need, especially for the problem that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the package API is extremely simple. The entire library for the static and the ESC library are like two source files. Uh, if you look at the, the source tree for some of these other ones, there they provide a ton of uh, functionality and they have a huge package API, most of which you may not need. Uh, so, in general, I'd say choose the simplest solution for your, that fits your problem. And if I had to pick, I would pick one of those two because they're so simple. So, do you use an inner project or do you use a comparative slide? I'm curious because I have a question about putting the static back to go in the first uh, So, the question was have I used this in a project? And I have not used this in a project that I've deployed into uh, production capacity, but I have used this to, per, to familiarize myself cool. to build like a test example. Yeah, did you think about that? It's like, you were talking about how um, you're gonna end up dipping the file every time you run your static tool. I, I, I keep going back and forth on whether I wanna actually put that static on the file in any source control and have to be part of my little so the follow-up question was, uh, what, am, are we concerned about putting this uh, file with a bunch of zip contents into source control? And the short answer is yes, you should be concerned about that, and you should understand that this is for a specific use case. You don't want to be putting you know, 10 megs of zip contents into a single line that's going to create a div every time you touch the file. Um, so. The, this is actually, if you read the blog post from this, uh, I forget his name, but the MJI M. Gibson, the ESC project, he actually uh, touches on this and one of the requirements that he had that static did not meet was that you shouldn't get a huge diff every time you change the file contents. Um, so this is definitely a, a tool for a specific purpose. So if, you have, if you're worried about changing the file contents and creating uh, a large diff every time, 
you change the file contents, then you should look at a different library like that one. Or, obviously, at a certain point, you're going to actually need a, a real uh, file serving option and not just embed it in a go binary. So, yes, that is a concern, and you should be concerned about that. So 